The Jubilee sets out for its third sailing today. So let's take a look at some of the information coming out about what life is like on this new cruise ship. Ahoy travelers, it's Amy here with your weekly cruise news roundup and my thoughts on some of the biggest stories of the week. Carnival's newest ship, the Jubilee, has completed two sailings as of today. Both are seven-day Western Caribbean cruises out of Galveston, Texas. This ship has been highly anticipated by Carnival enthusiasts, Texans, and cruisers in general. Not only is this Carnival's newest XL-class ship, but it is the last new ship build Carnival has planned for the foreseeable future. Both the Mardi Gras and Celebration have been huge hits, and many are anxious to see for themselves what Jubilee's one-of-a-kind venues are like. I know I'm counting down the days to our Jubilee cruise at the end of this month. Since I've been pretty busy working on the video I have planned for Tuesday, and I'm really excited about it, hope you come back for that, I haven't had a lot of time to devote to cruise news this week, so I decided to focus on what we're finding out about the Jubilee. Now, I haven't been watching a bunch of videos and ship walkthroughs because I really want to experience this ship for myself because it'll be so new when we get on it. This is a pretty big departure for me because usually I would watch multiple videos about a ship before embarkation day. I like to know what I'm getting into. But for once, I've decided to keep my research to the photos that Carnival released of the ship, deck maps so I know where to get around and how to get around, and the information that's been trickling out from those who've been on the ship. Now, I have heard a few comments that the rooms on the Jubilee are smaller than previous ships, but I'm not sure that that's exactly true. I looked this up, and the Jubilee's balconies are almost identical to the size of the Celebration, and it's bigger than those on ships like the Dream and Vista. One thing that has been mentioned several times is that the AC isn't working very well in the rooms. Now this may be more of a balcony cabin issue and possibly it's just certain areas of the ship. I also saw one person say that they brought a fan and then didn't need it. So that's why I wonder if it's just certain areas of the ship or maybe just balcony cabins. I'm not really for sure. This was actually brought up on John Hill's Facebook page for one of his daily Q&As this week. One person said, aboard the Jubilee now on the 10th floor, our room has been continuously not a comfortable room temperature. It's hot. Went down for a fan, zero available. Obviously, I'm not the only one. I told my husband not to bring our fan since it's a brand new ship. What a mistake. Bring your fan just in case. Yeah, we had maintenance come in three times. John Heald responded and said, hello, thank you for letting me know. I'm sure my colleagues have done everything they can and have monitored the temperature. Pretty sure John Heald does voice to text. He mentioned it recently and does not go back and double check. We don't have fans available unless for medical emergencies. So yes, we do always recommend people bring their own. I'll speak with the management now and ask somebody to speak with you. Let me see what you have reported and what they have done. Thank you for taking the time to write to me. I hope overall you've had the most wonderful time and I will be here if you need anything. And the person did say, yeah, we're not letting this bother us. We're not letting this ruin our cruise, but it is hot in our room. Regardless of whether or not our room ends up being hot or they get this fixed, I will be sure to bring my portable fan. I always take a fan, but for sure, I'm not gonna be forgetting it on my Jubilee cruise. Now, apparently there were internet issues on the most recent sailing, not the first sailing. Everybody said it was great for the first sailing, but this one that just debarked today, there've been reports that the internet was down for a day or two, and Jubilee should have some of the best internet out there with Starlink and the new 5G connection that Carnival's working on across their fleet. Hopefully that was just a fluke and it's already been fixed. According to one passenger, Wi-Fi was affected for multiple days. Now, I don't know if that was continuous or kind of off and on. And I think based on some of what I've seen, it wasn't like just we couldn't use it for three days straight. I think it was kind of an off and on thing. But they said they only received a refund for one day, which might make sense if it was off and on. I really don't know because it's kind of conflicting reports and nobody's being super specific. Now, internet is expensive on a cruise ship, so I can only imagine how upsetting it would be to pay for that, not get it, and then only get reimbursed for one day. 
Remember though, when you book some of the first sailings on a new ship, you're bound to come across some bugs that need to be sorted out. That's just the reality of it. In the past, we've been known to book spa rooms or a spa pass, but with Jubilee Spa being located on deck five, it just didn't seem like the experience would be similar to what we've experienced on ships like the Dream. I think that was a good move on our part based on some of the comments that I've been seeing. There have been complaints that the Thalassa therapy pool is too cool and it's not enough jets in it, that the therapy rooms are way too crowded and they're very loud. And since the area is no longer located on those top decks, it's dark and windowless, which is sad. Now there was an entire discussion on whether or not the Jubilee had enough country and Western music for a Galveston ship. I kind of got tickled at this back and forth, especially since I can't stand country music, at least nothing made after 1994. In my opinion, that's when country blended with rock and there was no reason to go listen to the country station. If they were going to basically incorporate rock into it, you had Shania Twain who had the same songs on both stations. And you see a lot of crossover now and I'm just not into this newer country. I say newer, but 1994, good grief. I'm so old. That was the year I graduated high school. The, the problem is country music to me is like fingernails on a chalkboard. And I get irrationally irritated when I have to hear it. I went into Tractor Supply uh, the other day and they're blaring country music. And I'm just like, I can't get out of here fast enough. Now I can handle about any other kind of music, even bluegrass. So for me, I'm hoping that there's a nice mix of all kinds of music and I'm not going to be inundated with constant country music. Information coming out about the food and various eating establishments have been all over the place. I'm not surprised though, since people's opinions on what is good and acceptable when it comes to food really varies widely. One commenter said that they had super slow service in the Atlantic dining room and was able to get switched to the Pacific where they had better service. I've seen some comment that the food in the MDR was good. Others said it's gone downhill from previous carnival cruises. When it comes to include fast food though, Carnival usually comes out on top and I've only seen pretty positive reports on those restaurants. Overall, I have seen multiple people say that despite how many people are on board, the Jubilee just doesn't feel crowded, which is a good thing. Many have said that there aren't that many lines, but when there is, they move really quickly. And it sounds like Carnival's made some adjustments to how things are set up in order to relieve issues that have been seen on other ships. I can't wait to get on the Jubilee and find out for myself which of the complaints and rumors are true. But until then, I'm going to be checking out the discussions to make sure that I'm prepared without spoiling surprises that Jubilee has in store for us. Are you one of the few that have already been on the Jubilee? If so, drop a comment below on your experience. I would love to know what you think. Are you ready for more information on cruising? Well, why not stick around and check out this video and then come back for more information designed to help you have an amazing cruise. Have a blessed week, everyone.